our 35th film in this little series. Welcome to this 35th. God, it's many. Uh, pattern of the month. Um, today I'm gonna tie a samurai. And I was going to start a little bit, uh, uh, or maybe I should start by excusing first that I sound maybe a bit different. And I'm just recovering from my second time of COVID. <laughs> this time was better, but it's still a little bit of uh, feeling a little bit used. Anyway, uh, Samurais. The whole idea with Samurais was to make a long-winged drop-formed fly that would, you could fish fast, sideways, cross the current. And I started with the black wing tradition, meaning I had all my Samurais, even if they were green or if they were black or Michaelis or whatever, they had a black wing. And then I added a white underwing uh, on that fly or on that fly design and I fished them that way. But then I started actually fishing samurais in all kinds of colors. Uh, uh, the Taurish ones or and uh, the Patagorba one. This is a uh, superb fly by the way. And today I'm going to do a version on uh, the light brown, olive, yellow uh, colors. And uh, we call this, uh, I call it the lion fly and this one the lion samurai because it's got these lion yellow light brown colors. And um, I would say this is a fly that I would fish uh, in tinted water on a sunny day. And it sounds like the only, you can only fish them then, but they, the colors are absolutely superb on these conditions. But you can also fish this, of course, on a clear river on a, a cloudy day, or you can even tint it with a bit more flash and fish it on a bit more. Uh, colored water. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So let's uh, start uh, by cutting some uh, tubing and get going. Uh, I'm gonna tie these on our, today I should call them maybe lion colored tubing, but uh, what we call gold tubing. Uh, and uh, I'm using like I do almost on all my flies, the medium and extra small combination. Um, and the first thing to think about is uh, uh, how long you want to have the medium tubing. And I will cut down this a little bit, but uh, when it comes to summarize that has a very long and slim wing like this, you can see what is this? Maybe the longest strands are 20 centimeters. I like to build my fly so I get the hook in the middle. Even if there's a, a, a few very long strands quite far back, it doesn't really matter because I'm fishing this sideways. Uh, but don't cut them, cut them down too much. I will do this maybe uh, like three centimeters. And the good thing I, uh, on our cutter is that um, you can actually see how long they are and, and cut more than one exactly the same length. And, and when I tie flies for my own boxes, I never tie one. Uh, I tend to tie five or six or so. And so I always know that if I have a fly that really works good, there's another one in my box and also one to give away, of course. Okay, so medium and uh, let's do this. Extra small, this is already cut at an angle. Put it on, put on the extra small so I know that the extra small is quite far inside the medium. Today I'm gonna tie with our olive thread 
and um, those of you who have seen me tie know that I tie 12 all the time. I very seldom use uh, our 8 0 thread, and uh, it's, I think, better to do uh, more turns with a thinner thread than a few turns with a heavier thread. I used to say it works the same way as an, a wire. Uh, a wire with many fine threads is stronger than one whole uh, piece of metal. And I think it works the same here. It's much easier to tie a strong ply with more thread, more turns of thread. And the thin thread allows you to use more turns. Okay. I start with uh, Mirage and um, do the same I, uh, as I do, normally do. I just work my thread back. I don't need to do it uh, very careful because it's not gonna be seen. And then I wind the Mirage back, saving about six mil and turn it and double it up to the front, pulling it and tying in. And I tie in most of my materials underneath the tube, simply because it's, uh, it's a good habit, but it's also not seen so much uh, when the fly is ready. Okay, I have a piece here of our uh, hollow braid. And uh, this we call Nasty Rusty. I tie it in and um, I've been talking so many times on how good our hollow braid is or our braid is. And the good thing is that it's super strong and it's also so thin so you can overlap it when you tie. Meaning it's much easier to do a really even and even a body that will grow to the front and you just overlap it a little bit more the more to the front you come and you pull it and tie it in and it's uh, to tie a strong fly uh, if material starts to move on the fly it will sooner or later break and you need to be able to, to uh, let's say, take a piece of this. Um, you need to be able to, to pull really hard. And uh, that's why it's good to have a very, very strong material. So you can, you can really pull down on the material so it doesn't start slipping. Okay. And you know that on a samurai, I don't have any half goals. That's why I only tie in one uh, braid here and build up the body. And <coughs> sorry for that. As I normally say, I let all my materials grow to the front. So I get a natural tapering with the thinnest part to be the bare tubing. That's where I, I, I pick a color so the tubing is also part of the pattern that's uh, one of the ideas with the with doing these uh fits tubings in different colors uh okay i use glitz glitz it's a material with very long fibers extremely easy to dub and um i start I can be pretty brutal when it comes to tying in the, the glitz materials, but I'm maybe a little careful on the first uh, material I put on because I don't want it to, to, I want it to taper. So I need the dubbing to be thinnest in the back. And um, like all our SSS materials uh, are, um, Glitz consists of uh, different fibers and different colors. Normally, I save maybe three or four millimeters to tie in the wing. 
on a samurai I save a little bit more and the reason for that is that I would like to have a bit of dubbing in front of the wing too so and now I just brush this and uh, I know a lot of you watching these films they you use our materials and our tools and uh, and our stuff and and the thing is that it's all made to come together so uh, the brush is superb to pick up the glitz and it's a really mean little brush um, and we try to do materials tools and all the stuff uh, to make it as uh, as easy as possible to tie a super good fly okay talking and talking so I'm gonna do this a little bit different here now because normally I say that on all my flies I have the darkest material on top. Uh, today I'm gonna tie a fly where I have a tiny little wing underneath the main wing. And this is, um, this is gonna be, if the main wing is translucent enough, it's going to be like just a little center that will help uh, also the body, which is the same here, to, to form a little darker center of the fly. And um, I can do it either with a Patagorva brown uh, piece of hair or I can do this. I, I found this very dark uh, lion color uh, piece of hair here gonna use this now on the other one you saw I think I had a brown one but I just wanted to show you that also it's like this you can do variations on all patterns just changing a little bit on the coloration of the of the hair of the wing uh, you get a fly that's even better maybe for a bit clear water or a bit more color and like that so you get uh, more variation to the flies in your box if you look at this now I have to be careful so I don't tie in too much hair, hair here and you know that normally I tie down the hair tie it in very wide like this and I tie it down on the sides to get a fly that's very translucent but this on the samurais I'd like to have the wing to be sitting on top of the tube so I just take this and I tie it in on top pull back a little bit here so it's not down on the sides and the reason for that is that I want to have a slim profile and I cut it off On my Samurais, they are normally no flush. Uh, but on this, and to add, I want to add a little bit of sparkle inside of this. I'm doing a couple of strands of angel hair, and I use uh, our nasty rusty again. Tie them in one or two turns, and just double back. And you can also see that one of the reasons I normally don't put in any flash is that brushing the glitz makes quite a bit of, maybe a little too long, quite a bit of, of, of flashy appearance to the fly anyway. Um, okay, so what I've done now is actually that I went into one of the packs that we sent to you guys and stole a piece of of uh, hair here because I actually didn't have any hair myself that was good enough or good enough but it was as good as this this is just fantastic uh, and on the samurai you need to have uh, a straight a, a straight hair that uh, doesn't have too much under fur uh, because you don't want to have a too much uh, uh, of a 
drop form. You want it to be very long, slim drop form. And uh, I just brushed this a little bit. And uh, if you look at this, what I liked about it is, uh, is also that the, all the tips are absolutely perfect. And uh, it's shiny. It's got a very nice shine to it. So I take this and I tie it in on top. Look at the length. Instead of pulling down or putting my nail on top and pulling down like this, I take it and I put it on top. Pull it up to make it uh, a narrow profile. And I tie it in. Quite a bit of thread here and I don't need to be careful looking at this. If you want to make sure you have the right tapering you can just take it and pull it and and see so you get few strands here uh, in the end. Okay and cut it off and uh, I'm gonna do uh, on this like I do on most of my flies. I'm gonna put a uh, jungle cock on there, and um, uh, when I use natural jungle cock, I'm very careful of uh, only using domestic birds with the cytus. Uh, okay. These were formed very nice from the start. You can see there's a one right and one left uh, feather. Uh, they are maybe a little flat like this, and I'm gonna curve them over my thumbnail before I tie them in, just a little bit like this. So I get a feather that will follow the wing. And I always start with the one on my side and uh, normally on Samurais I uh, let the jungle cock be as long as the tube. Uh, like that. Form it again a little bit over the nail. And uh, Hold up, look so I get the same length and um, tie it in. And the good thing with proportions is that it's a lot easier to make sure you get the right proportions when you ha when you start with the, the side closest to you. It's a little high up like that. I can just press it a little bit to get it down a little bit and uh, cut, cut away. A little bit of glue and uh, the glue will make this uh, part of the fly that is the oops new bottle be careful that is the most vulnerable part where you actually you want your hair to stay on there all the time and especially this straight hair can be a bit slippery so it's good to just put a little bit of glue on. Okay, and uh, normally I do a hackle here uh, on a traditional fly, but on the Samurais, I go back to my blitz and um, have to be a bit crazy to put on a knot here. And um, you can see how easy clits will dub on. And I move the, the dubbing back over, covering all the thread. And it's also one thing with, with all flies is that the thread is uh, not as strong as most of the other parts of the fly. So it's good to cover up the thread and make sure the thread is not going to be terrorized by fish teeth. Um, okay, looks ugly, right? But I think what I do here makes this look 
pretty sexy actually. I, I cover up the jungle cock and the wing and I start brushing this a little bit. And you can see how my brush will pick up the strands and just pull them out. And this way I can pull out and I can create what I think is a very translucent, bit flashy appearance too, of course. And I can do it just, I do a little bit every side so I get it even. And then I pull this back and uh, I get more volume. And even though this is a very thin fly, I want to have that drop form. So I want this part to be the, the heaviest one. To me, that looks good. Colors that blend together, performing, uh, making a fly that will, will be uh, in one total shade, so to say. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna do, uh, let's do that one was not good. This one is better. Uh, we're gonna do rump feather. And um, it's one of these materials that uh, I I tied with it a long time, but but last, what, 10 years or so, I use more and more of the pheasant rum feathers. So it's a very durable material. And um, it creates a huckle that is almost a bit uh, like a heron huckle kind of material. I pull down the tip and I uh, cut off and I take the little triangle and I tie it in here uh, and um, just hold back a few turns and when I have a feather like this I don't need to use our magic little hackle plier but I can just take this double using three fingers slide in the tube in the middle and just double back. And you can see how uh, all the fibers are on one side of the center of the feather just by me holding it back like this. And uh, I can do one more turn like that. And it's forming a really nice drop shaped tackle. Uh, as I said, it creates, it helps to create the drop form and also uh, is translucent and also of course adds movement. I would say on summarize, maybe the, the actual fly should always look alive but the way I fish samurais, I fish them very fast. Uh, and it, I would say it's not as important to have a pulsing uh, um, fly that way. Of course, you can fish samurais in a, in a more normal way too. But normally I fish them fast on a, down, on a downstream valley and even retrieve if to, to get enough speed. Okay. So, now I'm going to add a little more motion here. I could end the fly now. I think it looks really good. But I just picked those out. And I, as I said, what you can do, like with the underwing here, with the hackles, is that you can actually vary this fly. You want it to be a bit darker in the front. You go with the brown soft tackle. You want it to be more yellow. You can have the yellow one if you don't want the 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 grizzly ones let's do an olive like this just add a little more olive to it really nice i think got another yellow there i'm going to do i think on the one i had here where, where was it here this is tied with an olive front okay i'm gonna tie this with a tanned see how this looks a tanned grizzly one that maybe it's a bit lighter it will uh, because of the
color differentiation give maybe a little more life appearance to the fly and I do this the same I'll take away what I don't don't want in the bottom first and uh, I create this little triangle I showed you before I when I cut things like this I I tend not to do this I put the scissor on my finger and then I move the material in to my finger makes it a lot easier to be accurate in cutting and I tie this in a few turns here I can use it was probably long enough not to do it but I can use our plier and I just point all the fibers one direction do the three fingers hold back and I take this and I tie it in one more turn a lot of fibers on this I have to untangle it a bit just pull it back and put on one more and I would say two is enough here so I take this and I tie it in I think it's pretty neat to have if you have a favorite fly or fly you know that works on a special river or during special conditions it's pretty cool to do small var variations and maybe you don't need more than a bit of clouds to come over to change over from uh, from one of the variations to another one and I cut this away and when it comes to soft tackles like this, this had a lot of fibers. I tried to take either a dubbing needle or just a scissor to, to just untangle it first. So I can see that it's actually even. Does it look good? I think it looks very good, actually. You can't answer when I ask things, so I'll have to say it myself. Okay, and it's the same with the cones here. Uh, if I want to, on lion flies, I fish bone both with, uh, or I tie both with our metallic brown one and with uh, uh, one of my favorite colors, actually, the yellow metallic one. Uh, and this adds a little more yellow to it. If I want the, the uh, fly to be darker in the front, if I would have had a, a, a brownish hackle here, I would probably have used the brown one to get the more distinct front part of the fly. But this will be pretty cool, I think, with the, with the yellow one. And I do the same here. I take just a little bit of glue and uh, I've said it before and you've seen me do it before probably that I always use support either by one finger like this or like this so I don't mess up my very soft tackles and if I don't want this to suck in here so I put a little bit of glue on the tube a few millimeters in front of um, the hackle then I hold back and I take the thread and I pick up some glue and doing this I'm sure I don't get too much glue to destroy the hackles still a little bit there if I take the cone when I put it on I twist it on like this then I spread the little glue that's right there so small tricks but tricks that will make a difference I think the cone decides also how wide the fly is in the front I used here our extra small one you can go down to our micros or you can go up to the small ones that are biggest ones and you sounds crazy but we've changed color we changed sizes on uh, our turbos Yes, I explained it before, but if you look at this medium size, 
or medium from us extra small small and micro the difference using these two makes one hell of a difference on how wide the fly will be and what kind of drop shape you get if you want to have that extremely thin uh, uh, drop shape you can put the micro on even on a big fly like this the cone is what decides the profile of the fly and this is also one of the uh, major thoughts behind our fit system is that you pick a cone that will decide the profile uh, of your fly meaning that you can also fish a big one like this on a small fly if you want to have it really fat okay so here we go i take it out of the vise pull down the hackles use my finger again support and i cut maybe two to three mil and um, i have to excuse you for using a black lighter on a golden fly or a yellow fly yellow lion yellow fly and i just melt this down carefully like this and make sure this gets tight down to the cone uh, holding it like this i will get a good hole for my leader few secs before i touch it or i will damage that little nice melted fit tubing there ready did it turn out good i think it did and if i compare this to here now you can see what i said that maybe the one with the grizzly hackle looks a little bit more alive or it's it, it gets more more uh I don't know what to say, but it, it looks a bit more alive. I like Grizzly and the bared hackles uh, to, to create that appearance. But also the olive makes a little discreeter fly maybe. And I would say that both of them are super nice fly, flies. And look at this and you can see why I really like to get into your pot and packs and steal a piece of this because it was just fantastic material okay ready i hope you enjoyed it and uh, a bit different uh, the banana colorations has gained a lot of popularity over the years and um, I fish this and I fish what are nasty banana, which is a more brownish yellow fly. I do the same with them. I sometimes add some olive, sometimes some brown and some more uh, distinct yellow, depending on what I want. Uh, and uh, those of you who like to try, we do the same. Uh, as we always do we have our fly packs told you a few months ago we are doing we have the new stickers uh, that are more formed like a fly I think they're pretty cool uh, six um, uh, flies for those of you who don't tie or want to have some extras and also the pack with materials for those of you who you can see the nice hair in there uh, those of you who want to tie uh, 10 flies or more and since we've been doing so many of these now and uh, we have a lot of packs and we get a lot of um, questions about can we buy you know you can subscribe to this and I know a lot of you do but you can also buy single packs but we actually now decided just yes, we're getting uh, so many different that we're gonna have a pack uh, with, um, I was going to say unsorted, but it's, it will be a blind pack where we pick five 
and get five different PM packs uh, for you um, at a little discounted price. So you actually pay for four and get five. Bloody good deal, I think. Okay, so we are uh, heading into February. Next uh, time is gonna be 36, right? I'm gonna tie a totally different fly. And I must uh, uh, suggest that you keep an eye on our web because this is actually the last PE pattern of the month we do before our launch, our global launch, our big happening for the year when we're going to present our uh, S3 rod series and a new Burgundy Sailor reel series that will be out through our sailor dealers, our best dealers in Europe and in the US too, uh, 1st of March. And uh, since we decided to keep it a little bit of a secret, I'm not going to show you today. But they are here and we are super happy about it. You know, we've been doing the limited edition series now this past year. And this will be our next little step into giving you guys what we think is really good stuff. Okay, talking too much every time. You're so kind, some of you saying that the talk is what's good. And actually we, uh, we listen to you guys and we have a plan to do a little series of small films where we are just going to sit down and share some of our best stories with you. But that we will probably not present until, uh, I don't know, maybe beginning of the season, of the salmon season here and the end of the spring or the fall. I don't know, depending on how much things to do. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. I think the fly turned out good. I'm gonna fish this shortly. Thank you very much for watching and hope you picked up some small tips and tricks for your own time. Thank you.